Good afternoon YouTube viewers and subscribers. So today was a mail day and I got a box in the mail from a gentleman that's been a viewer of my channel for what I believe is many years and he is uh, his name is Gene and he's not a novice to this hobby at all. In fact he's been in this hobby long before I have been and I think his hobby experience dates back to 1958 so he knows what he's doing when it comes to running glow engines and a variety of other uh, electric models and that type of thing. So what I've got today is an engine that Gene sent to me and I was very intrigued by his email that I got earlier in the week uh, stating that he had a catastrophic failure of this engine because in my experience not so much as his I have never ever heard of a catastrophic failure of this nature on a Sato engine. So I've got some details of this Sato engine, but let's go ahead and let's start opening this box up and I'll discuss those details as we go along. And I'm very fortunate and thankful, Gene, thank you very much for sending this to me so that I can share this with uh, the viewing population because this is something that's very unheard of to me. So let's look inside this box. Take a look at this engine. Uh, let's see, it's taped up there too, so let's cut this tape here yeah. Magnum FS 52 AR box nice engines don't have any more because I sold them but they're really nice let's take a look at this guy this is a Sato FA 65 engine and this just blows me away from the story I was told let's see what the engine actually looks like so before I unwrap it here's the setup Gene bought this off of eBay. The seller said, well, and I'm going to digress for a minute. The seller said, new engine run only once. That irritates me, not um, because of Gene, what Gene said. People that are selling engines, I'm going to digress here for a second. People that sell engines on eBay or RC groups or wherever the hell you sell engines. If an engine has been run, it's not new. That word new should never, ever be applied to an engine that's had fuel run through it. Period. So, Gene said this ad said that it was a new engine run only once. That rubs me wrong because it's a used engine at that point. As soon as a single drop of fuel has gone through this engine, it's a used engine. So anyway, back to the story. Used engine, run once. Gene put it on the stand one time, ran it. He said it idled perfectly, was great put it right into an 81 inch Piper Cub not sure of the manufacturer and he was flying with this engine and he flew this engine maybe 10 or 11 times on the 10th or 11th time he's in flight and he hears a loud pop and the propeller stops immediately he successfully lands the airplane and finds this now the engine wasn't oh my god oh my gosh the engine was inverted this is bad. This is really bad. This is what shocks me. Oh my goodness. This is what happened to this engine. Holy crap. Let me zoom in here. Because this is unbelievable. 10th or 11th flight. Now he was running Powermaster 15% nitro fuel. 18% oil content. I believe it was maybe synthetic caster or just a synthetic fuel. And this happens. He was running a 12.8 wood prop and tacked on the ground at 9,000 RPM. Should be well within perfect operating range. Let me see if I've got any other. That's all the details I've got, but look at this thing. The thing that really strikes me about this was when Gene had sent this to me and asked me about this, he said, I've got this engine, uh, 10 flights on it, is it worth fixing or should I just throw it away? And I said, well, based on what you're describing to me, Gene, I would never ever throw an engine away, period, because there are still serviceable parts on the engine. Fortunately for me, there are some serviceable parts that here that I need, which is very nice. And I told him, when he told me it was an FA-65, 
I said, well, first of all, there are no more FA-65s made, so getting replacement parts for this engine are going to be extremely hard to find. Uh, because they're just, they don't, they're not made anymore and they're getting really hard to find. This, after seeing the type of engine, the Sato 65 engine this is, this is a first generation 65, meaning that it's A, the high compression engine, it has the air bleed carb, the original stock exhaust, and by the way, I have two of these engines and I needed a carb for one of them. So, parts for this engine are even more rare because there are some differences in the head of this engine that were changed fairly quickly when they replaced this carb. Now the one that I had rebuilt, one of these generation one engines, I found that it uses the springs, valve springs, for 45, 50 size engine. So one of the upgrades they made to this engine when they detuned it, removed the air bleed carb, uh, took the dome off the top of the piston, was that they actually changed the, the size of the valve, uh, valve springs. Now whether the valves changed or not, I'm not entirely sure because on the engine I rebuilt, I only really needed valve springs. So I bought brand new Sato FA65 valve springs and lo and behold they wouldn't fit in the head. It wasn't machined out big enough for them. This is a generation one engine. This is unbelievable. Now what looks like happened here is exactly what I thought. Now those of you that watch my channel know that I had two OSFS 48 Surpass engines that had this exact same failure mechanism and now I see why and I understand why this part failed right away. Let me go ahead and grab some tools here and start taking this off so I can explain this and maybe quit talking quite so much. But it looks like it looks like it suffered the same fate as those two 48 surpass engines which was the crank pin came off or sheared off the crank off the counterweight of the crankshaft and it looks like the reason is the same mistake OS made in their very first offerings of the FA of the FS48 surpass engine which was they had hollow crank pins that were pressed in to the crankshaft and not one complete continuous crankshaft that was a machine part that had a solid crank pin. And I say that because I think I see a hollow crankshaft here, or a crank pin. So let's go ahead and pull this rear cover off and confirm this. And boy, is this a lesson for those manufacturers that they probably learned the hard way. I'm betting that there was more than one of these early Gen 1 Sato 65's that had this failure mechanism, but like I told Gene, this is the first time I've ever heard, ever, in 30 years, 30 plus years of being in this hobby, and he's been in it longer than I am, this is the first time he's ever had an engine failure like this, and this is the first time I've ever heard of a Sato engine having a catastrophic engine failure of this nature. And check that out right there. You can see hollow crank pin. Where did the crank pin go? Look at that thing. You can see right here that it's hollow and whatever remains in this connecting rod is hollow. So there's your culprit. Let me see if I can get in there and a little bit closer. Hollow crank pin pressed into the counterweight. That's the mode of failure. So Gene, it was nothing that you did wrong at all. It was a design defect. I'm not even saying it was a material defect. This was a design flaw that OS also made with the 48 Surpass engine. Unbelievable. I don't know if I'm going to be able to... For some reason that seems kind of wedged. It doesn't seem like that part of the pin wants to... Oh, there we go. Look at that. Okay, here we go. That part of the pin is out. Look at that. Hollow. Watch as I move my hand away. You can see light through that. Hollow crank pin. Root cause. 
design defect hollow crank pin pressed into a crankshaft should never happen. That's as far as I'm going to go with this particular video. Gene, I want to thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to have this engine now. Unfortunately, it cannot be repaired because I even searched around to see if there was a replacement crank uh, case for a 65, but I'm not entirely sure that the crank case or the bearings for the Gen 1 Sato FA65 is the same as all later ones after they detuned it. So that makes this engine incredibly rare and even more difficult to find replacement parts for. So this is now a parts engine which fortunately for me I own and again Gene I thank you for that and I thank you for the opportunity for me to actually do a little bit of investigation and now we know the root cause of this failure and it's the exact same root cause of those OSFS48 surpass engine failures so we have two Japanese manufacturers manufacturing engines at roughly the same period in time making the exact same mistake and this is the result of it pretty damn interesting I think thank you all for watching and again Gene thank you very much for the engine